All I have to do is just keep it together for the next hour. Oh, I forgot. I have a birthday party at 2 o'clock. I mean, it's okay. I'll just keep it together until the end of the day. Oh, shoot. I have guests coming over at 9. It's okay. Uh, I'll just keep it together until the end of the week. Of course. I have a new job starting next week. How could I forget? There's just no time for it. It seems like breaking down never fits into my schedule. I don't want anybody to know that I'm not okay. I don't want them to know anything other than the happy, strong person that they need me to be. Because that's not going to make my friend's graduation any more fun. That's not going to make my parents more proud when I go visit them. And that's definitely not going to get rid of my student loan debt. And no, I'm not on my period. So stop using that as an excuse. That's definitely scheduled two weeks away from now. I just feel like I have to tuck all these feelings, all these frustrations and pain away in my back pocket because otherwise people will just tell me I'm being a crybaby. Well, let me tell you, I am not a faucet and I can't just turn off the waterworks whenever you want me to. I should be able to cry because I can get angry, I can mourn, and I can feel rejected just as much as I'm allowed to be happy and joyful. I should be allowed time to tend to self-care, and people should just be understanding. And I'm not just my next appointment. But when will I ever have time for me? Wow, you have beautiful skin and such large eyes. You can't really be Asian. Hey, baby, what are you mixed with? I'm so tired of it. Cat calls, pickup lines, fucking Tinder messages. Then there was that first date with the guy who promised he didn't have an Asian fetish. Unprompted. Dude, if you feel the need to say it, you have a fetish. Broader PSA, white people. Exotic is not a compliment. It's code for not white. Exotic means different and you've made whiteness the norm. But then most of what you're complimenting comes from my proximity to whiteness anyway. That's why the emphasis is on what I'm mixed with. Why your comments are concerned with my height, weight, and eyes, or my skin that's really only a little darker than yours at the end of summer. If I weren't ethnically ambiguous, I'd be treated worse. So the fucked up reality is that there's privilege in my objectification. I am safer as an object of exoticized desire. That's America. As I embark upon a new chapter, I want y'all to know I do not have it all figured out. And I would love help. Why am I unprepared? Because y'all have set up a society that doesn't even give us the possibility to get to the levels that we want to aspire to get to. It takes us a ladder, a shoe ring, a skating ring, a whole football stadium just to get to where we want to go. But for some people, you got to know one person that automatically your life is set. While the rest of us are trying to get it and get it and get it and get it. And it's just getting harder and harder. But we still pushing because we know we're going to get to the top eventually. And that's what life is. The hustle and the work and the ethic and the people and the places that you build and gather together that create who you are. Life is you. Life continues to be what you bring into this world, what you offer into it, because what you feed into the world, it comes right back to you. And that's the magical part of it.
When I was a kid, low-rise jeans were in. The flat midriff, pelvic bones popping out, back dimples. Cameron Diaz was America's sweetheart. Then came apple-bottom jeans. Big butts are all the rage. But keep that Barbie waist and add in some big boobs. But not too big. Now, fit is in. Fit is the new thin. Thick thighs save lives. Grow those glutes. But don't let your muscles get too big, or you might just look like a man. Bulk up and get that big butt and thick thighs, but keep your stomach flat. Watch what you eat. Track everything that goes into your mouth. Measure every serving, but don't be compulsive. Uptight is unattractive. Fad diets are in, and manipulating your body for superficial visual appeal is all the rage. We've absorbed the patriarchy so deeply at this point that we think shaping and molding women's bodies is our own idea. Sorry to disappoint, but a waist trainer is just a modern-day corset. And your bulking and cutting phases is a socially sanctioned eating disorder. Women's body types are not trends, nor are they clay to be molded to fit the latest fall collection. My butt and bust does not go in or out of style. I'm a human being, not a cardigan. One day my mom finally stopped asking me when I was going to wear heels to formal events. When I wear a dress to work, my coworkers assume it's a holiday. I've been a tomboy most of my life, but the moment I express any inkling of femininity, people are surprised and impressed, or even shocked and confused. I'm done with having to fit inside the boxes. We have to escape the binary, these rules. Yes, I am a woman, I answer to she, her, But how I express myself does not just live in the dresses, the heels, the makeup. How I dress, who I am, who I love, all of these things are not exclusive. They don't tell the entire story the same way your cute little gender reveal party does not tell who your baby will grow up to be. At the end of the day, all you're letting the world know is if they have a vagina or a penis. No one ever questions a woman changing her name when she gets married. So why are we questioning when someone rather be called Mixta than Miss? They, them, isn't that plural? Well, I just won't use their pronouns so I don't mess it up. Why is someone's gender expression or pronouns the biggest inconvenience for you? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Gender norms aren't real. We're allowed to make our own rules about gender, and we have to allow others the same opportunity. If you can learn a person's name, you can learn their pronouns. Stop being so afraid to mess up or stumble. It's much better to make a mistake acknowledging someone's identity than ignoring it completely. Why are you so uncomfortable? I see the squirms, awkward coughs, and frantic conversation changes. PSA? Sex is not a bad word. You've got so much to say about my supposed sexy shorts, too short dress, and mm, those are tight jeans, even while I was still in my prepubescent body. But when it comes to actual sex, suddenly you all know how to keep your mouth shut. How dare you excuse the sexualization of my body while never prioritizing my education of it? Society is so consumed by selective puritanical propriety. You can point out what's sexy about my body while standing in a church, but it's too uncomfortable to educate me on basic biological functions. You've constructed these great swirling eddies of vague nothingness. You've primly dubbed down there, and then you wrap it all up in shame. Having sex with a boy? The worst possible mistake that will mark me for the rest of my life. Sex with a girl? Well, that's, you know, that, that's, an, that's impossible. We don't, we don't mention that. You've regulated sex to the heteronormative method for procreation and cut out 
all else, which is like 99% of it. Comprehensive sexual education is an imperative for all people, regardless of what your beliefs are. And many times, especially because of your beliefs. You can't claim to love people and then not give them the tools to understanding their own bodies. This perpetuation of ignorance surrounding sex and our sexual organs has to stop. Lack of information, misinformation, marking sex unspeakable and sexual organs unnameable is dangerous, confusing, and potentially devastating. Make space for sexual education. Make space for questions and conversations. Discuss pleasure, safety, and consent because this is necessary. Our bodies should not be an unknowable entity to our own selves. Our bodies are ours and we live our lives in them.